Hello everyone, this is Peak Entertainment and we are back again and here now we have another video for you and we're going to talk about Batwoman and whether we will see a significant improvement in its upcoming third season. Now season 3 of the show is due to debut on October the 13th on the CW and you can check out both reviews of the previous two seasons within my channel and I will leave the links for those within the description as well. Now overall just quickly on the show itself, I think it's been a lacklustre show overall i think it's lacking a certain imagination in terms of the antagonist of the show i think it's hinged too much on the batman universe in terms of its characters which is the case for a lot of the television shows centering around batman and i think there hasn't been enough expansiveness in terms of the batwoman mythos itself now in the last couple of days we've recently had a teaser trailer and then a full-on trailer release i'm not sure why they had to release both trailers in such close proximity but there you go this is how they do things so having looked at the trailer i'm still not any more convinced that that will indeed be the case it certainly left some head scratching questions as to what the story will be and the direction that they will take overall throughout this season now there may be some slight spoilers in terms of what's going ahead or what's gone previously for the show so just to warn you now when giving this overall breakdown now as we all know season two ended with gotham really in disarray we had all of those riots within the streets following black masks plans and at the end of the episode we saw various hints at classic antagonists when we saw there's certain objects within the river so we had hints at towards the penguin and both poison ivy we saw that alice was arrested at the end and we got hints as to her knowledge overall in terms of ryan's original biological mother so it seemed at this first season that we're really going to swing for the fences we all know the story behind the declining ratings of the show so i think they're going to make a big effort to go all out swinging perhaps in a last ditch effort in many ways to try and preserve the show and see if it can go ahead past season three so when we look at the trailer overall i think the first big talking point was that we had the first appearance of the mad hatter and this representation of the character i know it's only a trailer we only saw a couple of scenes it didn't really convince me overall yes we all know the mad hatter is much more of this frail more smaller villain he doesn't have the physicality of some of other of batman's classic villains but he just came across as a bit too jokey there was no real menace or intelligence that we associate with the character so much but hopefully it will be far more of a developed personality rather than just a one-off appearance like what we saw with victor Saz in season two so i wasn't very convinced by this overall interpretation and i preferred to be honest the version that we got from the gotham series if you remember i thought that was a far better version of mad hatter than what we saw in this trailer so far we then had some new additions in terms of characters to this season first we had robin givens appearing as jada jet who i believe will be ryan wilder's actual biological mother and that was very much referenced in the season two finale as i mentioned before she'll be playing jada jet a ceo of jet industries and i'm pretty much sure throughout the season we'll see her reconnect with ryan at some point and we also saw nick cregan appear as marcius jet who is jada's son of course so obviously we're going to go for much more of a family dynamic throughout this third season now whether marcius will find out who ryan's identity is we will wait and see whether jada will find out who ryan is as burns of batwoman we will also anticipate that as well so we're going to try and expand much more of the character in terms of ryan wilder and i think that's an overall good choice in terms of building on the character's presence which i feel felt sidelined throughout season two now another new character was victoria katagena i think that's her name as Rene montoya who is the well-known police officer within the batman universe so again we're building on the diversity and up in the ante in terms of the female characters about the show so she was only in this for one scene overall so not too much in terms of the direction that i'll take with this character we also got a first look at killer croc as well so yet again another batman villain included now i'm pretty much sure all the batman fans will be excited at seeing all of these classic villains but for me i just think it illustrates again the lack of depth and utilization of batwoman herself in terms of her own mythos why can't we see any villains from her own source material why have we got again go back to using batman's villains all the time maybe again it just underlines the fact that batwoman isn't a very strong character in terms of the 
DC universe and that she really doesn't have any particularly interesting characters within her own universe this is why again we keep using the Batman villain so that was a bit disappointing but I know Batman fans will be very excited at the prospect of seeing all of these classic antagonists and then we had what for me was the most talking point throughout this trailer and that was of course the role of Alice now in both of my reviews of the previous two seasons I fully understand that Alice has been the most interesting and most impactful character largely because I think Rachel Scarston has managed to exhibit more emotions and characteristics within all of the other acting performances and the showrunners I think are clearly aware that Alice is probably the most popular character within the show and I think over the two seasons they've been making certain allowances to try keep her involved in the narrative but I think this has come at the expense of the overall story and other characters within the overall show. Now to be honest Alice's story was really tied intrinsically to the story of Kate of course and we all know at the end of season two that Kate had departed to find Bruce I guess for some reason which still didn't make sense overall so we saw Alice had been arrested for her various crimes and we all know of course that she was responsible for the death of Ryan's adopted mother so at the end of the season two Alice's role was kind of complete there was no real reason to keep her involved with the overall show so to see her here it again is the showrunners just trying to find little avenues and little poles to try and keep Alice involved with the overall show and when we see these couple of scenes here we see it seemingly looks like the police are releasing Alice from parole it seems this is very strange you have to remember she was the one time gang leader in season one and she's murdered multiple people throughout season two but another strange development here is that it seems like she's being put in the custody of Ryan Wilder now why would this be the case because as we all know Ryan Wilder completed her parole she's free to go Ryan Wilder's got no connections to the police so why would the police be handing over such a dangerous criminal to Ryan now the only logical explanation I can come up with is that there's a major criminal on the loose, maybe it's Mad Hatter and Alice has got some key information or key intel that will help the police arrest the Mad Hatter but on some sort of condition Alice has asked to be put in the condition of Ryan Wilder and she's managed to negotiate some sort of custody terms in order for her to help them apprehend mad hatter or whoever the crazed criminal is within all of gotham that's the only rationale that i can come up with as to why alice has been released from prison and also why she's being put in the custody within ryan wilder it really doesn't make any sense at all but i'll give some leeway that they will come up with some sort of plausible explanation within the first couple of episodes within the show and then we got some money shots would have got a lot of fans excited where we saw both Ryan Wilder and Luke in their various bat costumes as well we all know that Luke devised the Batwing costume at the end of the season two finale so we're going to get some teaming up between the two characters involved I didn't really like this because again I think it takes away the individual presence of Batwoman herself when you have various other Bat characters. It throws up the implausibility because Luke has never been a skilled fighter. He as we all know has been the tech guy within the Batcave so all of a sudden he's going to be this trained combatant who's going to be able to take down criminals. You know, I'm pretty much sure we'll get a time jump and maybe Ryan Wilder has been training him because she is herself a martial arts trainer. So maybe that's how they will spin it. But I just think, again, it takes away the presence of Ryan. And I've said this a lot about all of the CW shows. The more and more that you give the supporting characters superpowers, super abilities, it takes away from the special role of the lead character. And so overall, in terms of the trailer, I'm not overly convinced that will be an improvement over season three. But in one sense, if you want to give it the benefit of the doubt, we have got quite a new batch of characters. So that will shake up the narrative and hopefully now it will give Ryan Wilder the chance to be really the central character. And we've got all of the supporting cast of characters really more integral around Ryan Wilder. I think the main weakness of season two is that most of the characters were highly connected to Kate. So a lot of the time Ryan Wilder really got sidelined but now season three we all know that we've seen the dispersion of the Crow security firm. Kate Kane has also 
left along with her father Jacob as well so a lot of the supporting characters will direct the narrative more towards Ryan Wilder and that will give her a better chance to shine of course we've still got Mary we've still got Luke we've still got Sophie and this will be interesting to see how will the team cope really when they're much more team Batwoman because they've got far less resources now that the Crow security firm has been disbanded of course so who will be the replacement? Will it just be Gotham PD or will it be another criminal prosecution entity that's coming over to try and combat the crime within all of Gotham? We will wait and see. But can it convince the fans? We all know about the declining ratings. It's been the least well received out of all the CW shows throughout its tenure this has been largely due to the lack of marketing and the infusion of certainly identity politics and social issues really that we more saw in season two rather than in season one so hopefully they can dial down a bit more on the diversity angles and representation intentions and just really build a much more of a superhero show let's see batwoman in action taking on all of these distinctive villains and antagonists throughout the show and let's really make it a much more of a fast-paced action and dynamic show with a bit more imagination in terms of the storytelling as well i think if they can focus on that direction then perhaps we can see an improvement in this series which will then hopefully garner more viewers and more ratings throughout the overall show in its third season we asked the final question will it get a season four i really think it will depend on the ratings i know a lot of people state that cw doesn't really care as much about ratings as such but i really think in terms of batwoman because we saw such a sharp decline in season two's ratings i think the viewership will be a key factor i think if it can have an improvement in season three then maybe cw will make the decision to keep it ahead for season four that woman is included in the big massive armageddon crossover the five episode part uh, which will be on the flash so i think that's an indication that the cw does want to continue with the character in terms of their overall cw first but like i said before i think because the ratings were so bad in season two they really will be hoping that for season three the ratings will be a lot more improved and then that's when they can make an overall decision as to whether batwoman will get it season four so like i said it looks like they're going for very much of a action-packed spectacular big effort in order to try and entice more fans that's why we're seeing a lot of the classic bat man villains penguin poison ivy killer croc and mad hatter of course to try and get fans more on side but it won't really work unless the storytelling is improved and the characters are far more developed if they can really make ryan wilder the central focus and engaging presence then i think that would give them a better chance in garnering a bigger success for the overall show so those are my thoughts and feelings on batwoman its season three trailer and whether the third season can convince fans that the show will be much more of an improvement this time around but let me know what you think in the comments below did you think that season two was much better of an improvement and you think you've got high hopes for season three or are you like me and felt that season two was much more of a downturn and that season three really needs to concentrate a lot more if it's going to have any chance of going past a season four or season five overall let me know what you think in the comments please also hit and like the subscription buttons so i can provide you with more high quality content like this in the future but that's it for now take care of yourselves stay at safe distances and i will see you very very soon <laughs>